shop is all ready. My wife got it all set up for me. And I'm gonna go into the cafe. And uh, make some wire for you today. So that's the lesson today. We're gonna make wire. And I'm gonna go into my workshop. It's a nice day. It's where the sun is, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon. So I gotta open the workshop. And uh, I love uh, teaching you this because it's gonna be very useful for you. So I'm gonna go into the, it's open already. So uh, I love this place. So today, I, um, very simple, I'm just going to make wire for you and then I'm going to show you how to make jump rings. That's the whole lesson today, all right? But when I'm here, I'm in heaven. This is my heaven and uh, I'm so happy uh, that you're going to join me today. I really am very happy about it, all right? So I'm going to go outside because I do all my melting outside. Now when I start shop, I, I think it's safer outside to do this. So, and I, I don't want to give away the air conditioning. So I'm going to open uh, the oxygen and uh, I'm going to open the LPG and the regulators are already set. And this is the torch I'm going to use. It's a big torch. This L red button is the LPG and this uh, blue button or knob is the oxygen. So it's all set to go. This is a very big torch and most of you see me do this in the classroom already, okay? So I'll lay the torch over here and I'm gonna melt this in a crucible. This is made out of ceramic, so this won't melt. This has a, a melting temperature of about 2,000, 800 degrees it's almost 3,000 degrees the torch only reaches about 2,000 okay you notice that it's kind of shiny inside and that's flux that I use and the uh, um, flux well it's right in this can right now let me show it to you it's it's a white powder and it's borax this is borax and it comes from South Africa and uh, it's mined in South Africa and it's used in the metals industry to keep metals clean, okay? And I keep it in uh, like a sugar container, but uh, you don't wanna put this in your meal. And for some time, the Thais were actually putting this borax in fish balls and selling them up country and people were getting poisoned, so. Uh, don't eat this stuff. It's great for cockroaches though, it kills cockroaches. So you can sprinkle this around your house and cockroaches eat it and die from borax. There's a top on it, I'm gonna open the top up to sprinkle it. You see the little holes here. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I'm gonna measure out some silver. And my silver, this is all my precious metal. And there's about I think there's a 75, a 70 to 80,000 baht worth of silver in here. This is about a two kilo. So there's a lot of silver. And in Thailand, this comes from Laos actually. In Thailand, this is my scrap box and you see the pure silver in there. That's all pure silver. And in Thailand, uh, this is, uh, they, you can get this down in Bon Mall, but you gotta know where to go because they'll put other metals in it and cheat you very badly. 
you know they'll put a little bit of copper in here you would never know but I buy this in a very reputable place and I have a relationship uh, with this store for almost 25 years okay all right so I'm gonna take the crucible and put some pure silver in here we want to get in uh, we'll get a little close-up for you and you'll see how much I'm putting and I'm just gonna pour it in like that and take uh, maybe uh, three little scoops of it this is all pure silver and pour it in and we have no waste even there's even a little piece of scrap in here okay so I think that's enough maybe a tiny bit more I'll put in okay now how many grams are in this crucible I'm guessing that there's about 40 grams right now in here I'm gonna make a, a lot of wire so I need a substantial amount of silver now it's very important that you close your supply of silver up I'm gonna put it on the second level of this bench and I was gonna pour it into this steel mold this is called an ingot mold it's it's made out of steel and it's it's not it's not hot or warm now but it needs to be before when you pour the silver in here the silver this neat thing needs to be warmed up not red hot but just warmed up and in this one is too small so I'm gonna to go to a bigger one I have a bigger one in here it's much longer okay and you see the tracks now if you're gonna make wire you're gonna use this side because you want a long ingot either this size or this size or fat ingot these two sizes are the same and these two sizes are pretty close they're almost the same this is a little thinner this track okay so I'm gonna lay down this I'm gonna light my torch I'm gonna to turn my gas on first and remember this rule is very important gas on first gas off first you hear what I said so that's the red knob and it's counterclockwise you turn it counterclockwise here we go I'm gonna turn the gas on now and I'm gonna use a gas striker I don't know that there it goes right there and uh, you can see that flame and the reason that flame is so yellow is that there's so much carbon being burnt LPG is a liquid petroleum gas and it's full of carbon uh, so when the petroleum burns it burns yellow and bright like that and years ago in America I'm talking years ago about 200 years ago they would have a yellow flame in the hallway of your house they were using natural gas coming out of the houses for light so this is great for light but it's not hot enough for melting metal I'm going to reduce it a little bit so it's so it touches the torch and now I'm going to add the oxygen the blue knob which way do I turn it try to commit this to memory counterclockwise is on and with the clock is off so keep that in your memory you always light the gas first never turn the oxygen on first why because you'll have a cap sound like an explosion the air the the natural draft here put this out I'm gonna light it again there we go and now I'm gonna add the oxygen and the flame will turn blue and now I'm gonna add the oxygen and you will see this yellow flame turn blue the, the knob on this torch is very loose all right, I'm going to add more gas now, and you'll see the yellow come back. There it is. And now I'm going to add oxygen. All right, a little bit more gas. And that's what I need for melting metal, okay? All right, the first thing you do is heat up the ingot mold. And we'll get a little closer shot for this. And you'll see me heating up the ingot mold now how hot well I say about four minutes three minutes four minutes well I've done this now in real time in four minutes and uh, I'm gonna turn the mold around like this 
uh, it's going to be more convenient for me to pour. Now what I'm going to do in this mold is I'm going to put in some oil. This is cooking oil. I put it in my own bottle with a top on it. And hopefully I'll be able to put it in this track. I put some cooking oil in here. And if you ask me why do you do this? Because I saw the ties do this. And it's a wonderful idea because the, um, the ingot comes out really smooth with this. This really keeps the ingot clean. And now I'm going to melt my metal. I'm going to start to get it hot. There we go. You can see the silver starting to melt now. Now after I get this sort of hot, just the top, I'm going to put on uh, the borax in. There's plenty of borax in here, but I'm going to add additional borax because I want to keep the metal clean during the pour. And that's what it does. Now you'll ask me, what does borax do? Well, it takes the oxygen away so the metal doesn't turn black. Uh, normally the metal would oxidize if you didn't use borax. It would oxidize. Now you notice it's kind of liquidy on top. So I'm going to take the borax now and pour it in here. And to keep the metal clean. A little bit. Just a little bit. And some of it went in the mold, but that's okay. You notice how yellow the flame is? That's from the borax. So the, the metal is giving off a, a very yellow flame from the borax that I added in here. And this is going to go to a liquid. You've got to be careful that it, the liquid is, goes right to the bottom. Because sometimes it looks like a liquid, but that's only on the top. So you want to... Uh, what you try to do is you try to uh, agitate it like this so that it rolls around a lot. And the uh, crucible is getting very hot. I'm going to pour out of the tip of the crucible, this side right here. And this is on a big brick, a big uh, construction brick. All right. And I might stop pouring if I see I have too much metal. I'll just see how much metal I have. So you can see it's completely liquid now, and I'm going to pour it into the mold. And how do I know it's liquid? By the way it rolls around. It's complete liquid. And here we go now. We're going to pour it in the mold. And you'll see a little bit of fire from the cooking oil. You ready? Here we go. And there it is. That's pretty good. We even got a little shoot over here. Now I'm going to turn off the gas. Always turn the gas off first. All right? And uh, so never turn the oxygen off first because the flame will follow the oxygen and will explode in the handpiece. This is called the mixing chamber of the torch. So always turn gas off first. And here we go. You'll be, there'll be no noise because the gas just goes off. Watch. And now there's still oxygen coming out and now the oxygen is off and this is off. Then I take this over to the tank and hang it up over here and for safety I'm going to turn the tank off. So the tank is off now. Uh, I'll turn the oxygen off later, the regulator. This is the regulator up here. I'll turn it off later because I'm going to use the torch again. And I'm going to turn the LPG off now. I have this rag to make sure I can turn it off very tight. It doesn't hurt my hand. Now the LPG is off. Very tight. I take the rag and I'm going to hold it with a rag. Because it is hot, I can feel it's very hot. Normally, the steel doesn't conduct heat that much. And I'm going to turn it over like that. And I, uh, you see that ingot is exposed. All right. Now I take the ingot. And if 
even the tweezers is hot so I'm gonna cool it throw it in the water I'll get rid of the borax and now I'm gonna pick this up and drop it in the water like that it gets cool almost instantly I can grab it now and the cooking oil kept it so clean that it's actually sparkly now I'm gonna take this over inside to the rolling machine and roll it okay and I gotta dry it off a little bit just like that just dry it off okay and now I'm gonna put this in the rolling machine and you're gonna watch me do that now so I'm Going to, this is the rolling machine. I have some oil, spray oil up on top. And sometimes I put a little oil in the gears here of the machine and on the rollers a little bit. Okay. Um, maybe the camera can come in now and get a shot of the rollers that I'm going to use. I'm going to use those rollers right there. So these rollers have to be clean, number one. There's a roller on top, a roller on the bottom, and it's like the old washing machines where after you wash your clothes, you put it through and this would squeeze the water out. And this is, these are washing machines that you don't know about because your mother and father don't even know about it because before your mother and father in the 1920s, they had washing machines with rubber rollers like this that you put your clothes through to take the water out, all right? Okay, so first of all, I'm going to open the machine up a little bit and I'm going to turn it on. There's a knob down here that turns it on. Now, the reason I don't have this machine in school is that it's dangerous. If you caught your fingers in there, now, first of all, I'd never get you out. And second of all, it, it will roll you till you were a piece of paper. You'd be that thin. You'd crush all your bones and everything. This machine has a four horsepower motor, so it's very powerful. I'm bringing the rollers down a little bit so they touch each other. Uh, you can see that adjustment on the top that I'm making. I'm turning this a little bit. And here we go. I'm gonna try to put this in the machine. And that side won't fit. Let's see if this side will fit. Yeah, there it goes. And it makes this bar very hard and compresses it. Don't forget, it's a four horsepower motor. It's very powerful. Now I'm gonna go in the second groove, if I can do it. And I always rotate it a little bit when I put it in. Okay. And I might go through the same groove again. I'm over one more groove now. And you'll notice that the metal is square now. And it's longer from the machine, okay? Now I'm going to take this big block here and turn it upside down to the bottom of it. Like that. And I'm going to take this hammer. Now this is made out of Durlon. It's like nylon, it's very soft, but it's good for straightening the metal. So I hit the metal, and I'm gonna straighten it out as much as I can, and take the banana shape out of it. And this is nice, because it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the metal at all. You know what this costs? You wouldn't believe it. This is 85 US dollars no need for it to be that expensive but uh, sometimes jewelry tools like from America well they're unaffordable they're so expensive so it's so good for you to be in Thailand and at some point I'm going to take you shopping and I think for about 15,000 baht I'm going to set you up with all the hammers and pliers you need and even a workbench and the whole thing is only going to cost you 16,000 baht. If you want to have your own workshop at home. And there are kids that I've already done this with. Taking them to... Okay, here we go again. I'm going through the feed process. Okay, watch me put it in. Okay, and I'm going to rotate it and go through the same one again.
Now, this makes this metal very hard. Look at how long it is now. It's getting longer. By the time I'm done, it's going to be a spool of wire. And that's what I'm trying to show you today. How to make wire, anneal it, and then make jump rings, which are used in jewelry all the time, okay? So here we go. I'm going in again. Let's see if I can fit it in this. Okay, and then I'm going to rotate it, put the sharp side up, and try to go through again. There we go. Okay, look at how long it is now. Okay, I'm going to light the gas now. I can see it coming out. I'm going to lower it down so that it touches the tip. There it is. And now I'm going to add the oxygen. Here's the oxygen. And I heated the whole thing up. I'm going to add more gas. More gas. And a little bit more oxygen, right like that. And now, I'm going to pick up this strip of metal. And I'm going to heat this up. And this process brings the metal to a light red color. So I'm going to heat this to a light red color. It takes a few seconds. This is a very hot flame. And what I'm doing, this process is called annealing. A-N-N-E-A-L-I-N-G. Annealing. And whenever you roll metal, you've got to go back and anneal it all the time. So you make it softer. Otherwise, the metal will crack because you're stressing the molecular structure of the metal. So you have to you have to get this to a light red color. Now it it seems to be going slowly, but it's actually getting red. You see the light red uh, flame of the tail behind the metal? That means the metal's getting to that red color. So watch for that tail behind the metal. See that red tail, that orange tail? That means I'm really getting the metal hot. And then I'm going to throw it in water when it gets to light red. When I get it to the right color, I'm going to throw it in water and chill it immediately. And, and then the molecules are re relaxed and silver is naturally soft. This is not soft now. But when I throw it in the water, after the molecules move back to their original position, then this metal is no longer under stress, and it's called annealed. And the name for this, when you get it soft again, is called malleable. Silver and gold are very malleable metals. So, I'm heating it up to that light red color, Getting the stress out of it. And here we go, into the water. Watch it go in the water. And there was a, a sound, I don't know if you can hear it, a big sis. Sound all right? And now we're gonna turn the gas off. Gas off first, which way? Clockwise. And now we're gonna turn the oxygen off. And then I come over to my cylinder, my oxygen cylinder, and turn it off for emergencies and turn off the LPG, the cooking gas. Okay, this is LPG, liquid petroleum gases in this tank. Okay, now I wanna show you something. Stay where you are. Look at this. The metal is not stressed anymore and it's very soft actually. I can bend it, I could make a nice bracelet out of that. But I'm going to go much thinner than this. I want to make wire. So we're going to go back and we're going to roll this and straighten it out, okay? Again, before you go back and put it on steel, dry this off. So you take it like that and dry it off like okay. that. Okay. So what I'm doing now is straightening it out. It's very soft now. You want to straighten it out like this. Straighten out the other side like this. And we're going to roll this thinner. So 
I'm gonna try right about, I'll, I'll try here first, there it goes. That, that really grabbed it. And then I'll turn it around and put it with the high side up. Put it through again. It's a little too loose in that one. And then I'm gonna go to the next track. Don't get so close. That's good enough. Okay. And I'll go to the next one. Okay, it's very long now. And I gotta remember which is the high side. So I keep that in my hand so I know that's the high side. Here we go. And here we go again. This is gonna be quite thin now. I wish I could have this machine in school, but it's simply too dangerous. I want you to look at that. You notice there's this track on both sides? That has to go through first now to get rid of that track. So I want to unbend this a little bit. Again, with my nylon hammer, my Durlon hammer. And uh, same here on this side. There we go, it looks good. And I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna put that track edge up first in there. Okay, and go through. Here we go. And it's, look at how long it is now. I'm gonna get a far shot, you move back. So look at that now, look at how long it is. Okay, and I'm gonna look for if what side is higher. There it is, it's that side. And here we go again. And I'm keeping it straight when it goes in. And it's exceptionally long now, and it's got that track on it that I must keep down. So I'm gonna try to straighten it with my hands. It's very tough now because it's just been rolled and the molecules are under a lot of stress now. All right, and here we go with the thin track up. I'm gonna go through, see if I can go through here. There we go. You notice how long it is, it's quite long. Okay, now the rule is, I'm gonna turn the machine off. The rule is to take it outside and use the big flame of the very hot torch. And I'm gonna reduce this by bending it like that and like that so I can heat this roll up because I'm still not down to the wire size that I want. It would be impossible to run the torch along it like this and keep the whole thing at temperature to get it to light red. You, you just can't do it. You can't get, you can't anneal something when it's very long. So you have to do what I'm doing here, compress it into a roll. And then again, you're gonna need strong hands for this. And that's one of the things jewelry will do for you. It will give you very strong hands. And here we go. And I've reduced that now to like a coil. And one more bend. So my metal looks like this now. And I'm gonna take around that end and crush it down like this. And there's my, that's what I'm going to anneal now. This is very hard needs to be annealed, then straightened out and put through the machine again. I'm going to turn my torch on, light it, gas on first. I turn the gas on first and light the gas. Okay, and now I'm going to add oxygen. I got a nice flame going there. And I'm going to pick this up with a tweezer. Make sure the tweezer's cool in your hand so you don't get burnt. And I'm going to heat this up. And this is annealing. I'm annealing it now. And look for that red tail, that orange tail. So when I get up to uh, get up to the heat, you'll see 
that orange tail start to come out. There it is. So this is getting hot because this is thinner now, so it's easier to heat up. And make sure you get it all to a light red color. And you can melt it, so be very careful that you don't melt it off. That can happen to you. Now in class, I won't let you do this. I'll do it for you. I think it's still too dangerous for you. So I'll, I'll do it for you. Now so I can roll it in two pieces. It's easier to handle. Actually, it's easier to handle in two pieces. And I'm straightening it out with the Durlan hammer. All right. And this is gonna be very easy to roll into wire now. It's very soft from the annealing process. Okay, and you see it's quite straight now. And I rotate it a little bit when I hit it and make sure it's quite straight. So you remember that thick piece I started with. Look, look where I got it to already, you know? That's really cool. Okay, and here we go. Here I'm feeding it through. All right, and and then when I get that ridge that I showed you before, I put that up, and I want to crush that down to make square wire. Okay, I'm going in the next track now. It's going to look more and more like wire. Okay, and then I'm going to put that ridge up again. And I'm guiding it through there. And I'm almost down to, the, there's two more notches I can go. So I'm going to go over the next notch and crush that edge down. I'm almost at the end of the roller right now. And this is the smallest wire I can make. Take a look at that now. Isn't that amazing? And now I'm gonna go to the last one. There it goes. And it's making that ridge. So I'm gonna crush that ridge down. Now I want you to see if you can get a close up of that. Do you see the little ridge on there? That's almost as small as I can go. Here we go. I'm going through one more last time. And this is gonna be the wire I'm gonna make. I gotta guide it so the ridge stays up. And that's it, that's as small as I can get with this machine, okay? Now I'm gonna take this and the same thing. I'm gonna make a coil and try to keep it tight as you can so it stays relatively, each coil stays relatively the same size. So I'm gonna try to get my fingers out. It's hard to get your fingers out. There it is. I'm going to anneal that, and I'm going to anneal that outside. So follow along with me. I think I'm going to hold it with these tongs. It's safer. Okay, and again, i got to be very careful now that I don't melt it into two or three pieces. So when you do this, this flame is so hot, 2,000 degrees, and silver melts at uh, about 1850, about 1650. So gas on first and light it. And you can see it's getting dark outside, so that's really, really bright now. If you have a lot of hair, be careful. If you use hairspray, you're gonna become a candle. You're gonna light up like a candle. Turn this down so it touches the tip of the torch. There it is, it's touching now. Add oxygen. and more gas, and more oxygen. And that's hot enough, because this is very thin wire now. All right, I'm gonna pick up the wire. See if I can get a, a little grip on it. And I'm gonna start to anneal it, and you gotta move fast, because if you slow down, you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna melt it. So, fast. 
and you're making it soft, you're going to anneal it. Don't stop for a second because you will, you will melt this piece of wire into two or three pieces and I don't want to do that. I want to make this a little thinner and go through some of the smaller holes in the plate. So I got to anneal it like this. You see the orange? That's telling you to stop. Don't go beyond that. And don't stop with your hand, even for a second, because you will melt this. An inch of the water right now. There we go. So I'm using a hand grinder here and it makes a lot of noise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen this to a point, okay? If, if you don't have this tool, I wouldn't imagine that I would buy this for you. Uh, I have it in the classroom. It makes, uh, it cuts away the silver very fast, you know. It's a little dangerous, there's no question. You should have safety goggles. I have safety glasses on, okay? Um, and what I'm trying to do is put a point on that, okay? You can also just take a file, a broad file, a big broad file, and make a point that way. But this is a lot speedier, so I always use it, okay? Okay, so there I go, there you go. You can see I brought that to a pretty sharp point, okay? And it should be a long tapered point, not a short taper. Do you understand taper? So the taper should be long, not from going from thick to thin in a very short point, not like that. And you need a long taper, okay? This machine is great for this, okay? And I want, to look, I want you to look at this disc on here it's some kind of an artificial abrasive and it's used for cleaning steel. And it will cut wood, it'll cut metal, and it'll, it'll shine up steel. It's very good, especially for hammerheads and stuff like that. You notice what I did in it? Look what I did. I took the cord and I put a piece of brass wire around it and tightened it so I have a loop to hold the tool. And then I have hooks on my workbench and I've got two of these. Here's a grinder one that's even faster. Okay, so now I'm taking this. Don't forget, I, it's already annealed. And uh, I'm putting it over here. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to draw it through a draw plate. Okay, I'm going to show you the plate up close so you can see what it looks like. This is a draw plate. And if these are good ones, they're really expensive. This thing's about, uh, it's about 8,000 baht, okay? And how do I know it's a good one? Let me show you a cheap one. This is made in Pakistan. And notice the holes, they have nothing inside them. They're just holes that are tapered, okay? And that's the, out, that's the way the metal's gonna come out. And these are the sizes you can get. Okay, and this plate really has a lot of holes in it and it comes from Pakistan and they have them from India and this is about 300 baht. So I would tell you don't buy this, buy the really good one and I'll show you the difference. If you look in the good one, you'll see there's another metal there, a gray metal inside and that's carbide, a really hard metal. So this thing will last a lifetime because the in, in, inlay in this is carbide. And carbide is one of the hardest metals known to man. So uh, a carbide plate will set you back about 8,000 to 10,000 baht nowadays. Okay, I think I didn't pay for that. I think I bought it for around five when I bought it, okay? So I'm gonna go in the tapered side 
and pull it through on this drawing bench. This drawing bench I made, and it ha it's electric, and it has a winch on it. See this motor here? To help me pull the metal through. See the winch on it, and the chain, and this triangle? I'm not using it. I'm going to do it by hand, okay? So one of the ways to make the pulling of the wire easier is to take wax. So I'm going to look for some wax. I have it on, on this bench. So I have this orange wax here. It's nothing special, just candle wax. That's all it is. All right? And I'm going to wax this thing up to make it easier to pull through the holes because I want to go from square to round. Now this takes a lot of power and it'll wear you out. But a lot of kids have done it already in my class. They learned how to make wire, even a short piece of wire that they need it. So you just wax it, lubricate it like this with the wax, and that makes it easier to go through the draw plate. Okay, now I'm gonna put my draw plate in. Let's see where the wire is now. This is uh, a calibers, and I'm gonna set it for zero. So it's set for zero, and I'm gonna open it. That's one millimeter, two millimeters, and this is about two millimeters uh, point, uh, point one. So this is 2.1, about 2.1, okay? I'm gonna draw this down a little bit on a drawing plate, okay? Now I take it to the drawing plate and I gotta look for the biggest hole, there it is. That's the biggest hole. And I'm gonna put this in the vise like that and put this through like this. And then I have this very special pliers. Look at this pliers. It's got a hook here. Actually, the hook would go in this triangle. So when the motor pulls it, the pliers gets tighter as it's being pulled. But I don't even use it. I mean, I could use it for this. Let's see if I can pull it through with this. Okay, so watch me bite that. You see me bite it? I've got to get a hole on that. And now I'm going to start to pull it. I'm going to get on the end of the machine and pull this like this. See? And I have to get another bite on it. Take a close shot, a close shot of the bite. There you go. And I got a bite on it. And I pull it. And it's becoming round wire now. I'm going to take another bite on it. I got a good bite. And I'm going to pull it all the way through. There we go. Okay, now what happened? The wire got harder. And the taper in the plate made it into round. I'm going to go through. I'm going to try to take a second bite on it now. I'm going to use a slightly different pliers. It's a bit more comfortable. Look at this one. It's a compound plier. It's very strong. I'm going to grab a bite on that. And I'm going to pull it through the plate. Look at that. And this thing really holds on to it, so I don't have to worry about it coming off. And it's smaller now, and it's round, perfectly round. So the wire is perfectly round now. Now I'm going to try to do it one more time through the next hole. Okay. And I'm going to draw the wire a little finer than this. Here we go, you ready? And I go and grab it again. And there you go. Look at, it's wire now. And I drew it down and let's take a measurement and see where we are now. That's zero right there. That's one millimeter, two millimeters. So I've drawn it down to two, two millimeters, so a little bit less than two millimeters now. I think I want to do it one more time. I don't know if I can get away with this without annealing. Normally you would have to anneal this again, but I'm going to try, we'll try, and I'll grab it again. Can you get a good shot of the thing being grabbed there? Okay, here we go, and I'm going to pull it, uh oh, this is going to be hard. but I could do it, and I grab it again, 
And a lot of students in my classes, they've already learned how to do this. And this, this goes back, you know, how many thousands of years? This is what I'm doing, the Egyptians did 3,000 years ago to make wire. So when you learn to do metal work, look at that, I made that wire. Okay, now I'm going to anneal it one more time. Again, I'm wrapping it around my hand. I hope it's not going to be hard to get my fingers out. There it is. Look. And I'm going to so go. So, this gas comes in a can. It's 49 baht a can. And this, this gas is butane, it's used to fill cigarette lighters. And when you go and buy those Bic lighters that you buy in every store, 7-Eleven, anywhere, that's the liquid that you see in this inside. This, this gas comes as a liquid too, and it becomes a gas when it goes into the atmosphere. It's controlled by this knob back here, and the red button squeezes a crystal that makes a little spark, and it lights the gas. This gas brings in the air through these two holes here and mixes it with the gas and it sounds very hot it sounds like a rocket when you turn it on but the gas outside with two gases is 20 times hotter but for a kneeling wire and soldering at your workbench this torch is great you know it's just very general flame and it doesn't give you a really fine pointed flame so you also, if you're at your workbench, you want to have a gas torch that looks like this too, with two gases I, for doing fine work, okay? But for general work, this is great. And when you buy jewelry tools, I would buy this. This whole thing here is about 350 baht. Now that you really buy the head and the cans of gas last a long time. And they're only 49 baht in Tesco or any of the main stores that you go to, okay? So I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna hold the wire. Don't forget, this is thin wire now. I'm gonna hold it to anneal it uh, with a regular tweezer. Okay, I'm gonna turn the gas on. Which way? Counterclockwise against the clock. And then light it with the Piazzo lighter. And there you go. All right, and then I'm gonna take this and start heating it and look for that light red trail. Now, don't melt this, because this torch could melt it, so be very careful. Make sure you got a really good grip on it when you're holding it. All right, so you're gonna go around the circle and you can go fast, and you'll start seeing that red trail, that orange trail it's hard to see I have so much light here that red trail is going to be kind of hard to see I'm ready to drop it now I see the red trail all around it it's good and hot and it's annealed already this is very thin wire here we go okay I dropped it into the water also cool your tweezers so you don't touch it and burn yourself all right now look you come back here and you turn that clockwise and turn it off and it's very safe. So this torch is okay for jewelry, it's really cool. And in India, in Pakistan, this is what they use. In Turkey, when they make jewelry, they, they use a torch like this. Uh, because uh, a two gas torch is very expensive. This torch costs about 1500 baht and uses these little tips like this okay these are the same tips that they use on chitya on uh, to give you injection so uh, these these are the same tips okay and th this torch doesn't have gas on it now but it has oxygen and LPG and it's 20 times hotter than that gas torch that I just showed you okay and look at how soft it is. It's amazing. It's like a noodle. It's so soft. There's no temper to it. What is temper? Temper means when metal is springy. This is not springy. It conforms to the way you pull it very easily. You can straighten it out very easily. I'm not going to use all of this today 
because I want to keep some for making jewelry. I'm just going to straighten it out a little bit. Okay. And just about like that. Okay, I'm going to curl it, some of it up again. All right, I just made it nice and straight, pretty straight like that, okay? And I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to use something that looks like this. You probably never saw this tool. This is a compound cutter with loads of power. See that? Look at the way that closes. Okay? So I'm only going to use to make some jump rings today because that was the whole purpose of this lesson was to make jump rings. Okay? So I'm going to cut off a piece of this. Um, probably right here. I'll give you that much. Cut it off. Cuts very easily. It's very soft. The silver is back to the same soft molecule structure. Silver and gold are really soft metals, but silver has two personalities. It can become tempered, like if you're making a money clip or something like that where you need springiness. Or a catch, maybe you're making a little catch and you want it to be springy. Or you're making a bracelet and you want to be able to take it off and you want it to go back to its original shape. So you want the metal on a bracelet to be springy, okay? But I want this soft for making jump rings, okay? And I'm gonna show you what jump rings are. So the long piece that I have in my hand, I'm gonna wrap around my hand like this, and it's easy to wrap because it's so annealed and so soft and back to its normal structure. And I'm gonna put this in my safe where I keep my silver for making jewelry, okay? And this part here, I'm gonna make jump rings. I'm gonna show you how to make jump rings today, all right? And I actually have a machine to make it. You don't need a machine. You can take any round piece of metal, hold this against the metal, and wrap by hand. You can do it that way. But I've got this luxury machine that I bought years ago. So I'm gonna use that machine this I bought from a, co a company in America called Pepe. And it's a jump ring machine. And it's got all these beautiful shafts. So let me adjust that. It's 5.5 and that's, that's correct. So this is 5.5. And you can make jump rings any size you want, even huge ones if you want. So this one is for huge. This is 12 millimeters, okay? And this one here is uh, 7.5. And then I think this would be the next thing down. And it's seven. So it's in five millimeter increments, these shafts, all right? I think for the sake of making a video, I'll use, this is seven right now, okay? So you come over here and you open up this chuck. And even my wife hasn't seen this machine. She didn't even know I had it. Okay? And you put this shaft in a chuck like that. And then you tighten it. I can turn this like this for making jump rings. All right, so I'm gonna go get the wire, which is here. And I'm gonna put it in the hole, I hope it fits. It does fit. Okay, now watch this. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to make this straight. So I come over here to my vise first, and I'm gonna take this and put it in the vise. I'm going to grab this like this and put my foot on my vise like this, see? And I'm going to pull this. I'm going to make, I have to make the vise very tight, very tight. And this is how you straighten wire. Are you watching me? Foot up on here like that and pull and you'll actually see it stretch. And look at how straight that is. It's beautiful. Now I'm gonna take it out of the vise, like this, and put it in the machine, 
and I'm going to start making jump rings like this. Look at that. Is that amazing? So I'm making a coil like a spring and I have to feed it very tight when I do it. It has to be very tight when you do it. And I'm, I'm going to let the last bit of it slide through like so and cut that okay because it's locked on there so I have to cut that little beginning and I'm gonna slide that right off look at that okay and I just made jump rings now you need to get a good tight shot of that coil I made it's perfect right and, and with this machine you can since you have every size you can make them as big as this I didn't do it if you're making jewelry. And jump rings are used to hold parts of jewelry together. Okay? Now, here's the interesting part. This thing comes with a, a special vise. So you open up the vise like this, and you unscrew both sides. Can you see that nice and clearly? All right, and then you put the jump ring inside like this. And I'm gonna put this sort of in the middle like that. Now I'm gonna pull this plate down very tight. And it comes with a special cutter. So I'm gonna, this plate has to be very tight though when you put it on. I'm gonna, and, it's not, and it's not equal, so I'm gonna loosen this side and tighten this side a little bit. This is from Pepe Tool Company, okay? And then it has a special cutter that goes like this that cuts across and makes all the jump rings. So I'm opening it to fit in my vise, and now it fits in my vise very nicely like that. I have not used this in three years, actually in three years. I never use it because I don't make that much jump rings. But today, what am I showing you? I'm showing you how to make jump rings. Okay, now look. Here is my, this is my flexible shaft. The motor is up here, and there's a cable running through here. And I have a special pedal. I'll bring that out. And when I step on it, watch what happens to this. See, the shaft turns, and it's turning clockwise. All right, I'm going to take this off like that so I took it off and I'm gonna put on this special one that has the cutter built into it it's the same it'll fit on should I hope and it should work yes it does work okay now I put this in here like so it should fit on there you go okay and I'm powering it. And I just cut through. Okay, I'm through. I'm going to take all the jump rings out and show them to you. And that's how you make jump, jump rings for jewelry.